Hi, welcome to this video on multi-step inequalities. And this is from 5.7 in the Envision textbook. <clears throat> so if you look above here, there is an example that is already worked out. And so we're going to look through this example and see what makes this a little different. Um, I'm going to work from the bottom up. Let's look at the last thing they did. The last thing that they have here is uh, they have this graph. So they have graphed the solution. And the graph of the solution is a uh, filled in circle at two thirds and an arrow going to the right. So that means that, <clears throat> now I look above, that the variable is greater than or equal to, and that's because it's going to the right, and equal to because it's colored in, to two thirteenths, which is what is on the graph. So to the, so then before they graphed it, they actually had a solution. So down here would be like this step would be graph. And before that, they had a solution. So working our way up from here, well, where did this solution come from? I'm going to look right at this section here. So here is a two-step inequality. 13t minus 13t minus 4 is greater than or equal to negative 2. So they added 4 to both sides, and then they divided both sides by 13 to get 2 thirteenths as the solution. So it looks here, it looks like in order to get the solution, they solved the two-step inequality. Now, before that, though, they didn't always have this two-step inequality. It looks like before that, there was actually some other stuff going on. Like here we had 7t and 6t were combined to make 13t. And even before that, <clears throat> the original situation had parentheses. So it looks like they first multiplied 2 times 3 and a half, then 2 times negative 2 to get a 7t minus 4. And then they had to add 6t. So we're going to call this top section here that is going to be the part where they had to simplify. So what makes it multi-step is, first, we're going to have to simplify the inequality. Then second, we're going to solve it, usually using a two-step process. Then finally, we're going to write the solution and graph it. Now somewhere in here, and here and here, you're going to want to check if you're right or not. But that's going to be our process. We have to simplify first. So it's really just like what you were doing before, but now we have to simplify also. <clears throat> so if I look at the try it, it's really complicated. It's kind of ugly, actually. So I have all these things here, and you here's what your first instinct is going to be. You're going to be like, oh, well, let me just put those two things together and just get rid of that extra part, but that's a mistake because <clears throat> when we simplify, whenever we see parentheses, we have to do the parentheses first. So um, you have to distribute the number on the outside of parentheses, which means that most of us are going to see this and go, okay, I got that. So that means I must have to multiply both of these by six. Well, that's where your other mistake was because it's not six. It's actually a negative 6. See this symbol here? It's really a negative 6 out here. So I can rewrite this as negative 1 plus negative 6, parentheses, 6 plus 2x is less than 11. So now that I change subtract to add and that second number to its opposite, I realize I actually am multiplying everything by a negative 6. So now when I rewrite it, I have negative 1 plus, well, negative 6 times 6 is negative 36, plus negative 6 times 2 is negative 12, x is less than 11. <clears throat> so now that I've distributed that number on the outside of parentheses, now would be an appropriate time to simplify by combining like terms. So I'm going to put my like terms together, but I can't cross this inequality, it's on the other side. So I have <clears throat> negative 
1 and negative 36 is uh, negative 37. Since I'm adding, I'm going to reorder this. And I have negative 12x. I said negative 12x. So now I'm going to add those things together. But I can't add them together because one has an x and one doesn't. So then I bring this 11. Now remember, I'm bringing down the symbol. We'll see what happens there. <clears throat> so now I have negative 12x plus negative 37 equals 11. So to solve this, I do the opposite. I'm going to add 37 to both sides because the opposite of negative is a positive. So I'm going to give a positive 37 to both sides. And I have negative 12x. And on the right, I have 48. So I'm going to divide by negative 12. Uh-oh, I'm dividing by a negative. That means something, or 13 again. What is my obsession with writing 13? So then I have x. Now, I divided by a negative 12, so something should have happened right here. I'm going to erase that. And um, 48 divided by negative 12 is negative 4. So just to see what happened here, let's go up to our graph. So I'm going to go to the graph now, and I'm at this one. And I'm going to put an open circle at the negative 4. And based on the symbol here, it looks like it should be less than. So I'll check negative 5. And I have to check negative 5 all the way back at the very beginning, to the very first inequality we had. So negative 1 minus 6, and then parentheses 6 plus 2x, but two, I'm going to do 2 times negative 5. All of that's supposed to be um, less than 11. So when I do this math, I have to do the parentheses first. So inside the parentheses, I have to multiply first. That's negative 10. And then plus 6 is negative 4. And then 6 times negative 4. So I'd have negative 1 minus 6. And in parentheses is negative 4. And so that is going to be, um, when, you, when you do this out in the calculator, I'm going to have 6 times negative 4 is negative 24. So I'd be 1 minus negative 24. So that's really 23. Oof, yikes. That's a lot. 23, is that less than 11? Why, no, it is not. So that means that negative 5 is not part of the solution. So I should not be graphing on the left. I should be graphing on the Right. Why should we be graphing over here? The other way. Remember how we said that? I'm going to check 0 because that's the easiest thing to check. So negative 1 minus 6. And then 6 plus 2 times 0 is 0. Is less than 11. <clears throat> so I would have negative 1 minus 6 times 6. So that's a negative 1 minus 36 is that less than 11 and yes it is because that's negative 37 so yay that is the correct side to graph so that means what symbol should go between the x and the negative 4 it should be a greater than so x is greater than negative 4 wow so that's a lot of work and you can see how messy and this can get let's look at one more First, before we look at another example, I want to show you the top of this page where it has the um, key concept, and it's kind of it's laying it out for you. It says solving multi-step inequalities are like multi-step problems. You first may use the distributed property. I have to combine like terms and use inverse relationships. So, in this example here, first they have to use the distributed property. Then, after they use the distributed property. To get from here to here, they are combining like terms. And then after they combine like terms, then they have a two-step equation. So then they just solve. And then finally, you have to make sure that you are writing the solution and graphing the solution. So 
those are all the steps. So that being said, as I look at number, um, number four here, um, why don't you pause and go ahead and first distribute and simplify number four. Okay, so I distributed the two, I did two times n and two times three. And then once I had two n plus six minus four, I did six minus four because I can subtract them there like terms. So now I have this very simple equation to solve. And so from here, I'm gonna just solve this inequality um, and using the two step process. So you can pause and try that and check your answer. So when I got down to the bottom, I had <clears throat> n is less than two. Now I think that is the right um, thing. I notice I don't have any negatives. So this should be the right, I'm not dividing by or multiplying by a negative. So this should be the right solution. But I'm, just in case I will check, I'm going to put, I think my solution is two and I'm going to take two and put it here, but I have to do RSS and I need to actually check and make sure I have the right number. So I'm gonna do my RSS. So I'm gonna pause. You can pause now and try on your own. Okay, so I got the same number, that's good. And since six is not less than six, it means I have an open circle at my solution of two. So I have the right number. So I'm gonna put an open circle there and I think it's less than. So I'm gonna choose some numbers that are less than two. Here's some numbers that are greater than two. So a number less than two might be zero. So I'll do two um, and then zero plus n minus four is less than six. So I have um, two times three is six minus four is two and two is less than six. So yes, it checks. I must be graphing on the left, which is good because that means my inequality of n less than two matches my graph. So there I have one that I didn't have to switch and that's because I wasn't multiplying or dividing by any negatives. If when you do example number five, you're gonna see that the first thing you do is distribute this negative two. And so in the end, you're gonna be dividing by a negative. So watch your signs there. And then um, in number seven, they have these graphs to choose from. And so if I was going to solve number seven, go ahead and I'm gonna write 18 here, is less than negative three. They give us plenty of room right here. So why don't you use the distributed property first and then pause and come back. Okay, so now I have this two-step inequality and I'm going to solve by subtracting six first from both sides. I get 12 and then negative 12x over here. Okay, so my next step then to solve this would be to divide by the coefficient. The coefficient is negative 12. When we divide by a negative, the symbol in the middle here flips around. Um, and the reason why is I really should be doing this in two steps. So if I have 12, let's go back for a second. Okay, I wanna show you something. If I have 12 is less than um, negative 12x, if I first divide by 12, then I have one is less than negative x. So what this saying is that the opposite of x is greater than one. If the opposite of x is greater than one, then x must be less than negative one. But that was just a side Thing with the, the opposite. So that can be confusing. So let's just, just focus on when you divide by negative, it flips. Maybe you don't care why, that's fine. But anyway, um, if I read this from the variable's perspective and I start with the x, the smaller end here, the pointy end of my inequality is towards the x. That means x is the smaller number, the number that's less. So x is less than negative one. So now that I see that, I should be able to choose the correct graph. And if I'm not sure, I can check. Like I can check a number like zero. And then I could pick zero and I can see which of these makes sense. If I put zero back in my inequality and I have 18 less than negative three times, four times zero is zero, minus two, 
Well, then I have 18 is less than negative 3 times, well, 0 minus 2 is negative 2. So negative 3 times negative 2 is 6. Is that true? No. 18 is not less than 6. So it means 0 should not be in my graph. So it can't be this one, and it can't be this one. I know it's not also equal to because there's no line there, so it has to be A. So there you go. So there were a few examples of multi-step inequalities. Um, just to reiterate our steps, you know, we have to use the distributive property to simplify. Then the next thing we would do is solve. And then after we solve, we would graph and write our, we would graph, sorry, and write our solution. So write your solution and graph. And those two things go hand in hand. Um, go ahead and tr check out Michelle here and see if you can find her mistake here in number eight and try number five. Thanks.